Hey there, Commanders. Today we have a ship build, which I've found to be particularly fun when fighting Thargoids. Meet the Plan C, a heavily engineered Alliance Challenger optimized for interceptor and scout combat. The Alliance Challenger is the biggest and heaviest of the Alliance Commission hulls, built to directly compete with the Federal gunship and offering similar performance metrics. The Alliance Challenger isn't as popular among AXI commanders because of its slower speeds, but the handling is excellent, and the hardpoint loadout is remarkably flexible. Like the Chieftain, the Challenger has a lot of military-only optional internals, leaving little space for support modules and cargo. While the Chieftain can support shields, it retains the strong hull bias of its smaller brothers, making it an excellent starting point for a shieldless ship. This is a hard-spec combat platform, and works best when used like one. For core internals, military-grade composites remain the go-to option for AX operations, providing the same hull integrity as reactive composites, but at a fraction of the cost, reducing total rebuy in the event of destruction. Deep plating experimental effects amplify the total absolute hull available, making the combination the standard for anything AX-related. When building hull tanks, it's important to take extra time to consider how the internal modules are going to be protected, which means avoiding engineering and base modules that reduce integrity. There will be a few exceptions to this rule, but the power plant is not one of them. A 6A reactor comes highly recommended, though a 6B can be made to work on tight budgets. Grade 5 armored reactor engineering is mission critical, with a double-braced experimental for maximum shieldless durability. This upgrade is especially critical because the power plant's position on the ship renders it vulnerable to Thargoid weapons. The bugs can and will cripple your power plant if it isn't hardened up. Speed remains the preferred method for managing encounters with all Thargoids, and thankfully, the Chieftain can be made relatively fast with Grade 5 Dirty Drive Tuning and the Drag Drive Experimental Effect. She won't outrun the fastest interceptors, but a max boost of 484 meters per second keeps it ahead of most threats, and in range of agile targets. 6A thrusters are the best for this, but 6B thrusters can be made to work on a budget, trading top speed and some maneuverability for greater module integrity and lower cost. The frameshift drive is essential for escaping encounters that the Challenger cannot win, so reliability is more important than range. Here we have a 5B jump drive with the Grade 5 Shielded Engineering Blueprint and Double Braced Experimental. This has the added benefit of lowering FSD thermal load during jump cycles, allowing for more aggressive maneuvering while charging for a jump. Some AXI builds allow for D-rated life support to save power and weight, but here that luxury is unavailable. The Chieftain has a massive glass house cockpit canopy positioned right at the front of the ship, where interceptors can jab at it relentlessly. A handful of direct hits from interceptor cannons will ventilate the cabin with extreme prejudice, so having some extra room to breathe is important. A-Rated Life Support offers 25 minutes of quiet time to consider your next move. Engineering here is optional, as it won't affect the integrity of the cockpit canopy. If you do put something in, lightweight or reinforced blueprints are equally viable, with reinforced being my personal preference on this build. The power distribution on this ship is set up differently than typical for AX builds. Most builds rely on a Grade 5 charge-enhanced blueprint. Since we are running shieldless, the only major power draw from the system's capacitor will be utility mounts, which means we don't need very much system power available. So long as the system capacitor is fully charged, good timing is all that is required to avoid a shutdown pulse. The boost profile on the Challenger is also very forgiving from the start, offering near permaboost capability without engineering, which means that the engine capacitor doesn't really need headroom for adequate boost performance in Thargoid encounters. This means we are free to dump every spare megajoule of power into the weapon systems, 
an ability that we are going to triple down on with a grade 5 weapon-focused engineering blueprint and charge-enhanced experimental effect. This combination will allow the Challenger to drive the most demanding weapons available, providing better recharge and power capacity for devastating attack runs. Sensor range on the Challenger is important, since it's slower. We want to be able to see threats from farther away. I've opted for a 4A long-range engineered sensor package, since we have the available energy to spare and the extra weight does not impact our top speed very much. The 4C fuel tank is left in its standard configuration. Optional internals are going to be a point of controversy, since there are a lot of right ways to do this. I played around with a few different optional internals configurations, starting with all slots configured for heavy-duty hull reinforcement packages. The result was 6500 absolute hull that tanks damage like a federal corvette. It's still possible to get overwhelmed, but this is one of the most durable ships I've ever built, and the faster boost lets it still escape lopsided engagements more reliably than bigger slower ships like the federal corvette. This configuration did have some problems. If a Thargoid swarm goes full suicide, the internal module damage basically guts the ship. The hull stays intact, but things like the FSD, power distributor, and even the drive system start malfunctioning. I even ran into situations where most of my weapons were inoperable, and much of the core systems severely damaged, with the hull above 30% integrity, on one occasion requiring multiple reboot repair cycles under fire hoping for enough time to manage a single full boost in order to escape. An automatic field maintenance unit can offset some of this damage. I eventually added a size 2 Guardian module reinforcement, but there just wasn't enough integrity to keep the core systems working. Even the AFM was rendered inoperable in one engagement. I eventually had to cave in and expand both the AFM and module reinforcements to use the size 6 optional internals, one for the AFM, and the other for a 5E Guardian Module Reinforcement. The AFM is a must with this build, and there should be one somewhere in the optional internals to keep the cabin from being ventilated on a regular basis. A-rated automatic field maintenance units remain the best option for combat ships, repairing at the fastest rate with the most total repair integrity available for use. The 5E Guardian Module Reinforcement works very well here helping keep the power demands in check without needing to do any advanced power management, though power priorities should be carefully mapped to prevent reactor damage from ripping the rug out from under you mid-fight. I'll go over power priority maps later on. E-rated Guardian module reinforcements are another off-meta recommendation. Most builds spec for D-rated module protection. Knocking 60% internal damage off the top sounds nice, but comes at the cost of increased power draw to run the unit, and less overall protection than the E-rated option. For this build, I found that the E-rated module provided adequate longevic protection without being rendered inoperable. It's also cheaper, which helps with rebuy costs if things go all the way south. All other optional internal slots on this build are fitted with D-rated hull reinforcement packages, heavy-duty grade 5, deep plating experimental effects. This provides a nice balance of internal and external protection with a total of about 5,700 absolute hull. This is adequate for solo fights against a Cyclops while ignoring its swarm completely. You do need to be accurate and press the interceptor aggressively, but this ship is able to manage it in open space without too much demand on the pilot for fine maneuvering. And now for the fun part. Our weapons package will be an aggressive combination of precision hardpoints designed to handle interceptors and scouts. This build specializes hard into the roll, leaving flat cannons for the featherweights, more able to keep pace with the swarm. This means that the challenger must ignore the swarm completely, lacking the weapons necessary to engage them. The large dorsal hardpoint will be a size 3E enhanced multi-cannon turret. This wonderful new weapon allows for persistent precision chipping damage on Thargoid hearts and on scouts. The turret typically engages around 3 kilometers and keeps engaging, offering reasonable time to kill on scouts and providing consistent, albeit small damage, to Thargoid interceptor hearts. 
This is a weapon meant to provide a quick response against weak targets, and consistent damage to stronger ones, helping to maintain the momentum of a fight. The three medium hardpoints are Fixed Mount Salvation Modified Guardian Plasma Chargers. These aggressive, high-damage weapons are the most ammunition-efficient AX weapons available. A single volley from these three hardpoints alone is able to one-shot any Thargoid scout, or exert a vulnerable heart on Cyclops interceptors. With effective planning, and a little luck, these three weapons together can also gib a Cyclops at two hearts or less, though you have to exploit the lightning attack with a full weapons capacitor and fully loaded magazine to do this reliably, making it a difficult but possible prospect during a fight. The three small hardpoints are turreted 1F pulse lasers. Engineering for these weapons is your choice. The Challenger is able to keep most targets locked in at medium range, 3 kilometers or less. Targets farther out are easy to reel in, so long-range engineering is less necessary. Power budgeting is also a bit tight on this build, so be careful with overcharged blueprints. Here I've opted for rapid fire to optimize damage without drawing on the capacitor too much. The weapons in the size 1 hardpoints are more about supporting damage than they are about anything else, so any engineering blueprint can work, but keep in mind that these weapons are still going to draw on your capacitor pool, so you'll want to be able to manage when they fire and at what. We won't be blazing any new ground here with utility selection, but we are going to pay special attention to where these modules are mounted, as it makes a difference on this build. Slots 1 and 2 are reserved for heat sinks. Stock units can work just fine here, so long as you have them. Heavy-duty blueprints will make them more reliable against Thargon suicide swarm attacks. The serious ultra-high capacity or extra ammo engineered heat sinks are also viable here if desired, but will likely be disabled during Thargoid swarm attack runs. It's important that these heat sinks go in slots 1 and 2, because this is the most likely side of a ship to be attacked by Thargon swarms during evasive maneuvers. Slot 3 is a Xenoscanner, which provides for hull and heart integrity information on Thargoid ships, helping with target and sub-target selection. Slot 4 is a shutdown field neutralizer. This is essential for all Thargoid engagement where interceptors are a possibility, AX combat zones and port defense operations commonly see interceptor attacks. Since every interceptor that enters the area releases a shutdown pulse on arrival, at the start of its last heart phase, and randomly during the fight, this defense is important and will see plenty of use. It's always better to have one of these on board than not. Placing these two modules on the ventral hull will protect them from incoming suicide damage, ensuring they are more likely to be available when needed. You can see the Coriolis build at the link in the video description. This ship is phenomenally fun to fly, offering an excellent balance of durability and maneuverability. It's a little less snappy than the Chieftain, but far more durable than the Crate. Most medium pad ships are built for speed, but the Challenger is built for strength. The Challenger can cold orbit with flight assist off, or fly right up to an interceptor and spit in its eye, accepting the kind of damage normally expected from larger ships, like the Anaconda or Corvette. Reliable damage output is a trivial affair at ranges under 2 kilometers. Lead time on the plasma chargers is minimal, making them accurate and effective against scouts to devastating effect. It's extremely satisfying to fly around port defense perimeters delivering long chains of one-shot kills against these obnoxious little turds. While the Challenger can feel its weight around tight corners, the nose keeps on target and delivers its damage with very little drama, clearing out landing zones almost as quickly as a Type 10. Against interceptors, the Challenger remains a stalwart defender and one of the best heart exertion ships I've flown. The weapon focus capacitor gives the plasma chargers massive reserves to beat down interceptor shields in attack runs, though these weapons are incredibly thirsty and eventually run even this powerful weapons capacitor dry. The plan C works best using medium length attack runs. Dive in, knives out, and fist flying for all it's worth. Once the weapon capacitor runs out, back up and catch your breath for a few seconds, letting the capacitor recover before diving in again. 
The Plasma Charger offers the Challenger long combat endurance, with the ship usually breaking down long before the ammunition runs out. Plasma Chargers also provide an easy overheat method for cooking off caustic damage in a hurry. Uncharged shots still provide a lot of heat when fired rapidly, though less than a Gauss cannon. This actually ends up being a good thing, because it means that ships using these weapons have more control over how hot they get when a deliberate overheat becomes necessary. Thargon swarms are still dangerous, especially when they become suicide missiles. Watch for thruster and reactor damage, as even an armored reactor has its limits. Be sure to set your power priorities so that key systems like your FSD keep working in tight situations. You can see how I've mapped out power priorities here. Large Thargon swarms can inflict a ton of damage quickly, so be aware of the swarm's disposition if engaging in open space. Surface port defense operations are where the Challenger really shines strong, since interceptors will not deploy swarms near planetary surfaces. The cockpit canopy requires constant attention. Anytime you hear it crack, take a few seconds to hit your module screen and start the AFM repair process. Avoid pointing your nose directly at an attacker until you are ready to fire, and then only point as long as needed to make a shot. If you see lots of cracks after an attack run, take a few seconds to allow the AFM to catch up. Losing your canopy isn't a crisis in this ship with A-rated life support, but it is annoying, and can reduce your combat effectiveness. The plan C is best for players who have unlocked all engineers, have access to size 2 fixed mount salvation guardian plasma chargers, and who have experience flying medium ships. This is a niche build, somewhat off the main AXI recommendations. Weapon loadouts are very flexible here. The plasma chargers can easily be swapped out for Gauss or shard weapons, along with any of the recent enhanced AX weapons. As with all ship builds, feel free to experiment and share your experiences. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.